Hey guys, why don't you join me while I make our annual fruit cake? So I'm making a light fruit cake today and I'm just dumping my candied cherries. Make sure you, you chop up all your candied fruits and your nuts uh, up pretty small so they stay suspended in your fruit cake. And I've got candied citron and this is actually really hard for me to find. If you're in the North Pacific Northwest, I found these at Safeway in the produce section. Um, Safeway might also be called Vons in some other parts of the country, but Safeway had it. And then I've got some sliced up almonds. And here I go slowly measuring my other almonds. And I will put the recipe for this down below in the video description box for you guys if you decide you want to make it. And so coat these with flour and that helps it stay suspended in the fruit cake. Oh, one more thing, golden raisins. Gotta add those golden raisins. So this is different than the fruit cake I made last year, but um, we will see how it goes. So there we go, golden raisins. It's a lot of candied fruit, raisins, and uh, nuts in this. So I'm very excited. I think it's going to be delicious. And then there goes my flour. And then just coat it really well. Make sure every piece is coated and chopped small and you shouldn't have any issues with it staying suspended in your final fruit cake. If you don't chop it small and you don't coat it in flour, there's a chance that it will all sink to the bottom of your fruit, fruit cake and not be evenly dispersed. Okay, I am creaming together the shortening and sugar. Yes, this recipe is from the 40s and they used a lot of shortening back then, I'm guessing because butter was rationed and, uh, you know, because of the war. So at least that's just what I think is the reason. Um, and there goes the sugar and you just want to make, beat this until it's light and fluffy. So if you have an electric mixer, like a hand mixer or a KitchenAid, like what I've got, there you go. And I'm showing you the eggs. I already cracked them into a bowl. And there we go, mixy mixy, light and fluffy. So it shouldn't take too long to do that. And then just add the eggs one at a time and beat them until they're well incorporated. And make sure you scrape your bowl and scrape your uh, paddle so that it all gets well incorporated. And here I go adding the extracts. And it's uh, orange extract, lemon extract, and rum extract. And I think it sounds good. And now you wanna gradually add your fruit nut and flour mixture add it in stages and don't make a mess like what i'm doing so there we go goes in and then be careful when you mix it you don't want a flour explosion all over your kitchen so we're just going to gradually add that in we're going to do it in stages and then i'm going to speed it up for you guys so you don't have to listen to me talk on and on and on So I thought I'd be cool and give you guys an action shot. There you go. You can see it. there's a lot of uh, fruit and nuts suspended in this thing. That's what we like to see with fruit cake. Chalk it full. Okay, so we have to steam this fruit cake before we bake it. I'm not sure why. We just have to. And so this is my big soup pot, uh, steaming pot, whatever you want to call it. I got it from a store called Winco here in Washington. You think you can get them anywhere. Any way you can set your fruitcake up to steam, do it. You just get creative. And now I'm spraying a bunt pan down with some cooking spray and make sure you spray it really well. Now this part was a pain in the ass. You have to line it with, line the bunt pan with parchment paper and I as you can see I'm like I have no idea how to do this this is really a huge pain in the butt if you crumple up parchment paper before you put it in something it makes it a lot easier like to mold it to the surface so that's what I should have done and it says to look to like cut it in the recipe it says to like cut the parchment paper and put it totally flat against the surface and screw it I just kind of did the best I can and I saved some cherries to put on the vent what will eventually be the top I kind of just laid them in the bottom and now I'm spooning carefully spooning the fruitcake mixture on top I wanted a decorative top and just kind of put it in there as best you can and I taste it because you know I'm a sucker for anything with raw eggs I like to live on the edge there you go Okay, now I had to get Dan's help with this because tying a ribbon about around this, or it's kitchen twine, was a pain in the butt. Cover it with uh, parchment paper, tie the top off with some kitchen twine, and now I've got some water in my pot and it's already steaming. 
and you want to keep an eye on that water level make sure it doesn't burn off and become bone dry you might have to keep an eye on it so in goes my fruit cake and I'm setting my timer and then uh, it was dinner time and I sure as hell wasn't cooking so I'm going to Cozy's Burgers out in South Bay to pick up some dinner for us and I get really embarrassed filming in public. And when I was walking towards the entrance with the camera, a woman saw me and I was horrified. So I almost dropped my camera because I was so embarrassed. I, I'm 37 years old and this is, this is what I'm doing. I'm a childless millennial. What do you expect? So yeah, getting out of the car, going up. I also bought some lottery tickets. I'm hoping to strike it rich. Yeah, I think that it is, do you see her? Okay, I cut her off. I didn't want to violate her privacy. But yeah, we got some onion rings and some hamburgers and it smells delicious. So, okay, back to the fruitcake. It's been steaming for a while. I'll put the exact time in the recipe and there it is. Okay, it's time to take it off from the stove. All right, and now I have to make a brown sugar glaze to go on top. I kind of forgot about that. Um, it called for light corn syrup. I didn't have light corn syrup, and you know, you your girl was not going out to the damn store to pick up light corn syrup when I had dark corn syrup already in the house. So I used that instead, and I will put this sugar glaze recipe in the video description box for you too. It's pretty simple. I think it was just like three ingredients. Okay, out comes the fruit cake. Be careful, there's steam. And then you just want to generously coat some of that glaze on the on the bottom. This is the bottom of the fruit cake. And then what we're going to do is you leave it uncovered. You don't put that cover back on. Make sure your oven's preheated and the fruit cake is going in. So this is me pulling it out of the oven. It's already done baking. I guess I missed a step. And now I'm going to invert it onto this little cake saver thing I have and hope to God it comes out. You want to do this while it's still a little bit warm but not piping hot so let it cool a little bit. There we go. Look see I told you I saved some cherries for the top and look how beautiful that is. I'm very proud. So we're going to coat this with some more of that glaze. We're going to let it cool and then uh, we're going to wrap it in cheesecake and I'm going to show you how to soak this this crazy thing in some booze and that just makes fruit cake even better. You don't have to add the booze if you don't want to. You, you absolutely don't have to, but I do it because I enjoy the flavor and it helps keep it uh, for a little while longer. So let's cut out to that next step. Okay, for a second I thought I had forgotten to film this part and I was really angry, but no, I did film it. So that is me opening up a brand new package of cheesecloth. And again, this is a step you don't have to do, but this is what I do with fruit cakes. I did this with my fruit cake I made a year ago, two years ago. I'll link to that above. Um, but here we go, unwrapping my cheesecloth. And I wrap my fruit cakes in cheesecloth and I take a spray bottle full of brandy. It could be really whatever alcohol you want, but uh, typically I think it's brandy or rum that's used and I spritz my fruit cake once it's wrapped in cheesecloth with brandy and I put it in an airtight container and I kind of just every day I kind of just spray it down with brandy and um, it gives a really good flavor to the fruit cake. It helps the fruit cake preserve because the longer it sits, the better the flavor of the fruit cake develops. This is what makes good fruit cake in my opinion. Um, but again, it's totally, you don't, you don't have to do it. And you can see I already cut out a piece because I couldn't help myself, I wanted to eat it and taste it because I'd never had this before and there I am with my spray bottle of brandy I think this is the way to do it and spraying it down spraying it down and then you can you can keep this fruit cake for a pretty long time uh, the recipe doesn't specify how long it'll keep but if you keep spraying it with alcohol it, it's gonna stick around for a while but again like I said you can totally skip the step if you don't drink alcohol or you don't like the flavor of it or if you're giving it to kids or somebody who can't have alcohol you don't have to do this but this is just how I do it Okay, everyone, it's just Molly today because Dan is at work, so I thought I would taste test this fruit cake and let you know what I think of it. All right, well, it's delicious. It's definitely dense, moist, fruity, has a little bit of that bourbon flavor from it, and it's really, really good. So another winning fruit cake. This recipe comes from the Woman Ho Woman's Home Companion Cookbook. This is from 1944. And you could substitute whatever, whatever kind of fruits and nuts you want in it. Um, or you could just go with the recipe. It's really delicious. 
And yeah, this was a fun fruit cake. Uh, I think this is the third one I've made so far. Um, like I said earlier, you don't have to put the bourbon on it if you don't want to. But um, I wanted to get this video out before Christmas. It's currently January 2nd. Um, but I wanted the flavors to develop in this. So that's why I didn't. I just kind of wanted to let it sit and let the flavors marinate, especially with that bourbon on it. Or um, just brandy, I mean brandy. Just to get that an idea of how that was actually going to taste so I could give you an accurate review. So, but it's delicious. Um, again... You should still be able to find the candy fruits in the store. I think the last time I was at Safeway, I still saw them. So, but yeah, um, next year I'm going to make my fruit cake well in advance so that it has plenty of time for the flavors to develop. I kind of rushed it this year and the holidays just kind of got out of hand. But um, yeah, if you make this fruit cake, uh, please let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. And if you want to see any other fruit cake videos, I will link them above. And I hope you guys have a, had a great holidays, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.